Hello class! Welcome to section 4.6, all about polynomial functions. So today we're going to talk about how to graph these functions, as well as some key things to look out for in terms of shape. So to start off with a little definition, a polynomial function is a function defined by the equation of the form f of x equals a n x to the n plus a n minus 1 x to the n minus 1 plus as many in between to get plus a to the a, a 1 to the x plus a 0. Now this looks a little bit scary, yes, but all we're noticing is that the exponent power decreases as you go to the right. So it was x to the n, then the next exponent is n minus 1. Go all the way to the way to the end, it's x to the first, and the last one actually doesn't even have uh, an exponent. It would be x to the 0. Okay, so this looks really intimidating, but it's very general. We have to keep in mind that if a to the n is not 0, so if this first term right here is not 0, then the degree of the polynomial is the largest exponent on the input variable. Okay, so the degree will be the largest exponent, making sure that the coefficient's not zero. So, in other words, look at these three examples. The biggest degree is three, so it's degree three polynomial. For g of u, the biggest power is seven, because the other power is two and zero. For l of x, the greatest exponent is just x to the first. There's an imaginary one there, so that it's a degree one polynomial. Okay, it might not necessarily be the first power. Just keep in mind you look at all the exponents and pick the biggest power. Some similar power functions for y equals x to the n, where n is a real number. These should look familiar, right? They're familiar from our last chapter, okay? If you look at the exponent, this is x to the 0, which is really anything to the 0 power is 1. It's a nice horizontal line there. This is x to the first when there's nothing written there. There's always an imaginary 1. x squared is our parabola. We learned that. x cubed is this little curved shape. I like to call it a Travolta. Think of John Travolta with his little disco. If it is a negative 1 power, it will look like these two curves with our asymptotes. And then if it's 1 half, it's that half parabola from our last chapter. So it, again, it is good to have familiar ideas with these shapes. So when we graph, we know what it should look like, and we use our xy table to verify. Heading down to some properties. So there's really two different properties. One is for even functions, and one is for odd functions. Okay, so this first one is even. If you look at the exponent, this would be like if it was 2, 4, 6, 8, whatever. It's even. These are some rules that go with it. It will be symmetric about the y-axis f is an increasing function for x is greater than 0. So all of these x values over here, as you get bigger on x, it's increasing. So it's going to go up in a positive direction. f is a decreasing function for any x less than 0. So if you're over here, it's actually less than, it's decreasing going down as you approach 0 f has a minimum value at x equals 0, right, that little vertex point, and f of x becomes unbounded positive as x becomes unbounded positive or negative. Now, kind of confusing in the vocab, I get that, but what it's saying is that in the very, very end, they're going to go the same direction. So if that means both arrows go up, or both arrows go down. They will be together. An even function has the same direction, either both up or both down. 
for cubed functions or odd functions, this could be to the third power, fifth power, seventh power, whatever, there's a little bit different to it. Notice it's not that parabola shape. It's what we call that travolta, the opposite directions. It's going to be symmetric about the origin this time. G is increasing for all values. Notice no matter what your x is, as you read left to right, it keeps getting bigger. There's not going to be a max or a min. We're actually just going to have like this middle point that we'll talk about. G of x becomes unbounded positive as it becomes positive. G of x becomes unbounded negative as it's unbounded and negative. In other words, these will be the two possible shapes you can have. It can start going down and end going up, or it would look like this. These are our two options for odd functions. Now I'm going to write a little note next to this. This is the positive. That's the negative. This one's the positive. This one's the negative. And we'll talk about it. We'll do plenty of examples, but it's good to have these shapes in mind. Let's give it a try, my dears. We're going to graph and state the intercepts. So already we're going to start with just some information. This negative sign right here is going to match right here, that opposite looking graph that's starting up going down. So I'm going to write this as negative slash it's decreasing. Like I'm trying to help myself get an idea of what this graph should look like. This exponent of 5 tells me it's an odd function. So I'm looking at this bottom section, it's odd, it's negative, so my general shape should look like this. Okay, that's all from the properties and what I can see from here. I also know that I can find that point in the middle. It's not called the vertex anymore, it's not a max or a min, but it's kind of where it changes shape. That would be the point running out of room, negative 2 comma 0, and that's exactly from when we learned last chapter, this plus 2 actually tells me the opposite direction. Okay, so it's a lot to start, but let's see if we can get some shape going with here. So I'm going to graph, this is negative 2, 0, and I'm going to make a little xy table. I'm going to put that point in the middle Oops. and maybe pick like negative 3 and negative 1, really anything to get that shape. If I plug negative 3 into the equation above, negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 to the fifth power will be negative 1. Negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, here we go. What if I plug in negative 1? Negative 1 plus 2 is positive 1. 1 to the 5th is 1. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. And look at, to me that might look like a linear line. But I have to keep in mind that I know the shape is going to be that little curve action. So there we go. Okay, that matches our idea and that matches our xy table. We do need to find our intercepts as well, so I'll change my color. The x-intercept is easy. We know that one already because that's where it crosses that axis, so negative 2, 0. I do need to find the y-intercept though. y-intercept is where you plug in x is 0. So I'm going to take my equation. y equals negative 3. I'm going to plug in 0. I'll get negative 3 times 2 to the 5th. 2 to the 5th is actually 32. When you multiply by negative 3, you get negative 96. Wow, that is very, very, like, I guess, far away. So these are your intercepts. X-intercept, Y-intercept, and you do not need to graph them because obviously, as you can see, negative 96 would be very, very, very far away. But it would be eventually, like, down here. 
and you could see your curve will touch that. Okay, let's try another one. We're going to look at some key information first. Looking at it, it is negative. So since it's negative, it's actually going to open down. Think of our even function. Because right here it's a 4, so it's even. It's going to be that parabola shape, but since it's negative, it should look like that. Okay, again, I got all that information from up here with my even properties. It's an even power of 4. It's negative, so it's going to open down. Now we do have a vertex point here because it's an even power. That is going to be the opposite of what's in the parentheses and you're not adding or subtracting anything. So it's going to be the point three zero. Let's graph and let's get some points to see what our shape is. So there we go. That's three zero. I'm going to make my XY table. I'm going to choose 3, 0 in the middle, and I'm going to choose a point to the left, a point to the right. If I plug 2 in, I get 2 minus 3 is negative 1. Negative 1 to an even power is positive, but now we have to multiply by a negative outside, so you get negative 1 half. So at 2, negative 1 half. It's looking good. It's already starting to look like it's going to go down. If I plug in 4, 4 minus 3 is positive 1. To the 4th is still positive. Times the negative is negative. So you actually also get negative 1 half. That's looking good. It's going to both go in the down direction. right? Even powers go the same direction. Odd powers open and close in different directions. And now I need to find my intercepts. So let's start. Our x-intercept is easy again because we're given it's 3, 0. The y-intercept means x is 0, so we plug in 0 in that normal equation at the beginning. So it's going to look like y equals negative 0 minus 3 to the 4th over 2. So we get negative 3 to the 4th. Negative 3 to the 4th is a positive 81. Keep in mind there's that negative sign out front. So you really get negative 1 half times 81 or about negative 40.5. So it's 0, negative 40.5. And that would make sense because if I look at my graph, negative 40.5 would be somewhere over here maybe and eventually your curve would touch. Okay, so big thing looking at these is direction. Odd powers will always start and end in opposite directions. Even powers will always start and end in the same direction. We'll have a ton of practice, I promise. Last thing is a little more properties about polynomials. So you can't have any breaks or cusps breaks if you look at option a right here a break is any gap right here that can't happen in a polynomial so since it has a break it cannot be a polynomial a cusp is like this point right here where it changes shape drastically at a point it was increasing then ding, it flips okay so that pointy part right here is a cusp and that is not allowed in a polynomial as well. So both of these would not be polynomials. You can just cross them off. Not polynomials. The second one is if degree is n, the number of turning points is at most n minus 1. So quick example, talk about this. Oops, sorry about that. So a quick example would be if I had the function 5x cubed. Well, this is degree 3, because that's the biggest power, and actually you are my only power. So if the degree is 3, I'm really saying n is 3. That's what the degree means. So if it's 3, I can have at most two what's called turning points. 
Okay, at most two. I could have zero, I could have one, I could have two. No more than two. Okay, always one less. As x gets very big, very positive or negative, then the polynomial looks like the power function. That's a repeat of what I mentioned before. If it's even, it's going to either both go up or both go down because it follows that power function. If it's odd, it will either increase the whole time or it will decrease the whole time. But it follows that power function as you go forever and ever. Okay, last but not least, please pause the video and you try this problem. Okay, hopefully you paused and you tried it on your own. We're going to explain what choice is correct and why the other two are incorrect. This is f of x equals negative x cubed plus x squared plus 9x plus 9. So it's a lot. I'm going to look at the biggest power. Okay, it's going to be a cubed function. So right now my mindset is like, okay, the degree is 3, n is 3. So we know at least... Sorry, at most, at most, we can have two turning points. Okay, so I know this. And since it is an odd function, I also know that it needs to start and end in opposite directions. Right, it's an odd function. It's also negative. So that means it's going to look like this. That's my mindset right off the bat. So the reason that I'm going to look at this is, okay, look at option A. It does start and end in opposite directions. It does have two turning points. But hey, this is a positive function. This increases the whole time. So this one's not true because it's really a positive x cubed function. Okay, look at the next one. It opens, it starts and ends in opposite directions. It has two turning points. So, so far I think that one's actually pretty good. Let's check the last one. Open and closes in separate directions, that's good. I have one, two, three, uh oh, four turning points. You can't have that. You can't have four turning points. You can only have at most two. So that is why option B is correct using all of our properties that we learned today. Please use these notes as we attempt our classwork and ask questions during class.